The Halo franchise was launched in 2001 with a high level of success. Over 81 million copies of Halo's numerous titles have been sold. This places Halo in the Gaming Hall of Fame due to its popularity and how profitable the venture has been. But every franchise has its origins and I want to take a deep dive into how Halo came into the spotlight. I'm Senor Donut and today we'll be looking at how the Master Chief stamped his place in the gaming industry. Join me as we explore the history of Halo Combat Evolved. <music> This story begins in 1995, where game studio Bungie had just released Marathon 2 Durandal. Marathon was an FPS set within a sci-fi world and was well received by the Mac and Windows player base. Bungie wanted to create a new title as opposed to a Marathon sequel. Jason Jones was the co-founder of Bungie as well as being a developer. He wanted this title to have vehicular combat, a futuristic world theme, 3D graphics and of course be an FPS. However, Jones struggled with the physics model of simulating vehicles within the game. Bungie decided to put this game idea on the shelf whilst they worked on Myth, The Fallen Lords, which would later release in 1997. In 1997, Jones wanted to continue work on the game that they'd shelved back in 1995. This game began as a 3D RTS set within a sci-fi universe. Bungie thought that it would be more fun for players to drive vehicles themselves, as opposed to just telling your units where to go. Alex Seropian, one of the developers, thought it would be more fun if the title was a third-person shooter where you could drive vehicles, so in 1998, Bungie scrapped the idea of an RTS and were all in for a shooter title. There was still one issue. The game didn't have a title. They had plans of calling the game Star Maker, Covenant, as well as Star Shield. But Bungie artist Paul Russell thought that the title would need to create a sense of mystery, so he suggested the name Halo. Bungie held a meeting with Apple CEO Steve Jobs to provide a platform for Halo. Steve really liked the idea, and he'd go on to unveil Halo at the Macworld Conference and Expo on July 21st, 1999. Steve announced that Halo would be released on both Mac OS and Windows-based systems. However, Bungie were under huge financial strain due to a glitch in Myth 2 wiping the contents of users' directories. Bungie had to recall these copies of the game, costing them over $800,000. They decided to hold a meeting with Ed Fries, the head of Microsoft Game Studio, in order to keep the studio alive. Well, it just so happened that Ed was looking for a game to launch of their upcoming console, and that console was called the Xbox. Microsoft would go on to acquire Bungie in 2000, giving the company a much needed lifeline. The pressure was now on Bungie to deliver as the Xbox was going to launch in less than a year and Halo was nowhere near ready. The first decision was to change the game's perspective from third person to first person. Bungie also had to ensure the game felt and played smoothly on the newly designed Xbox controller. To do this, game designer James Griezmer implemented code that would assist player movement and aim, while still making the player feel like they're in control. All other Bungie projects were cancelled, which meant that all members of the team were exclusively working on Halo. But even with all of Bungie working on the game, there wasn't enough time to add all of the features that they'd originally planned for. They scrapped the game's open world, the length of the campaign, as well as one level entirely. To save even more time, they decided to reuse certain levels. Bungie were in such a rush that developers would sleep in the office to maximise their time working on the game. The development of Halo was going well, but Bungie wanted to take the game to the next level. They wanted music in each level that would enact an emotional response from the players. They needed Martin O'Donnell. Martin had previously worked with Bungie composing the music for the Myth series and they knew he could do the same for Halo. Martin immediately started working with the game developers but he wanted the music to adapt to the gameplay as opposed to being static. Martin helped to develop cues that the developers could code into each level with the music adjusting itself to certain triggers within the game. With the development cycle out of the way and the game's design constantly changing, what exactly was Halo and how did it play? When Halo came out of the oven, it was a first person shooter set within a 3D world. You would play as the iconic Master Chief, a cybernetically enhanced super soldier. You could jump into vehicles and track enemy movements with your motion tracker. The Chief had an energy shield that would absorb damage from enemy projectiles. After a certain amount of time, your shield would replenish as long as you weren't taking additional damage. If your shields were down, then the Chief's hit points would be decreased, but there are health packs that could be picked up in each level. If the Chief's hit points hit zero, you'll die and the game would reload from the last checkpoint. There were 12 different weapons that the player could use which depended on which game mode you were in as well as the platform that you were playing on. These included the Needler which shot homing bullets at the enemy that would eventually explode, the Plasma Pistol that could be charged to inflict additional damage and very useful for enemies with shields, as well as the M60 also known as the Pistol or the Magnum. Not only was this one of the best weapons in the game but it was also given to you right at the start. Halo only allows players to carry two weapons at a time and it's more than likely the Pistol will take up one of these spots. There's also several enemy types that you'll have the joy of 
killing. You have the Covenant, which are a varying group of aliens consisting of your grunts, elites and jackals. The Flood, which are parasitic aliens that appear later in the game. And finally, Sentinels, which are essentially hovering robots. Top all of these features with the game's story, which to this day, Halo fans consider to be the best in the series, and you've got the perfect recipe for a gaming franchise. Halo would be released on November 15th, 2001, and whilst it was received well, it was criticised for being launched on the Xbox, which at the time was an unproven piece of hardware. It also received criticism when shown at E3 2001 due to its frame rate as well as technical issues. A prequel novel to the game's story elements, Halo The Fall of Reach, released prior to the game's launch. The author, Eric Nyland, only had seven weeks to write the novel, but despite the lack of preparation, the novel became a bestseller, selling close to 200,000 units. Halo was sold as a combined package with the Xbox, with over 50% of Xbox sales, including the game. One million copies of Halo were sold within the first five months, and these sales eclipsed any title in the sixth generation, including the PS2, Dreamcast, as well as the GameCube. By 2004, Halo had sold over 4 million copies, and by 2006, the game's Xbox sales had generated Microsoft over $170 million, and that was within the United States alone. Approximately 700,000 units were sold on the PC, generating Microsoft $22 million. Review scores for Halo were extremely positive, with IGN awarding it a 9.7, Metacritic a 97, and GameSpot giving it a 9.7. GameSpot stated that not only is Halo the best of the Xbox launch titles, but one of the best shooters ever on any platform. The game received praise by several reviewers for its single player campaign, enemy AI, the vehicular combat, as well as the weapon variety. That wasn't all though. As great as a positive review is, an award is a tangible verification that the studio has created a great game. Combat Evolved earned over 40 gaming awards awards, with four of these being Game of the Year awards, given by EGM, Edge, IGN and the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences. But how about Halo's audio? Did the mainstream media care about its soundtrack? Well, of course they did. Rolling Stone presented Halo with the Best Original Soundtrack Award, which would have meant a lot to Martin O'Donnell. In 2017, Halo was inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame by the Strong National Museum of Play. To be a part of my history of gaming list, you have to be a global franchise. We're not looking at one-hit wonders here. So how did the Halo franchise make over $81 million in sales? Halo expanded into a TV series, books and comics, as well as the esports scene. So. Let's take a brief look into these ventures. In 2013, development for a live-action Halo TV series would begin. This was originally supposed to be produced by Xbox Entertainment Studios, with Steven Spielberg serving as the executive producer. However, Xbox Entertainment Studios would shut down a year later and ended up in development hell for five years. It wasn't until 2019 when filming started for the show, but this was quickly put to a halt due to COVID-19. Also, who remembers COVID? That shit seems like it was 20 years ago these days. The show finally premiered in March 2022, receiving mostly positive reviews and a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The series was renewed for a second season, but was then cancelled in July 2024. You know you've made it big when Marvel agrees to publish your comics. Halo Uprising was a four-issue set of comics that bridged the gap from Halo 2 to Halo 3. This depicted the attacks on the Earth by the Covenant. The series was supposed to release prior to Halo 3's launch to build up some additional hype, but the first issue was released after the game's launch. However, the comic did receive criticism for its lack of Master Chief action as well as publication delays. Part 4 would release in June 2009, two years after Halo 3 had released. In 2014, 343 Industries and Microsoft launched their own esports league called the Halo Championship. In part partnership with the ESL. The league was based on the Master Chief collection for the first two seasons, but in 2015 things would change as the prize pool for the tournament was increased to $1 million, and that would be the opening event for Halo 5. The prize pool would later be increased to $2.5 million, which at the time was the largest prize pool in the history of an eSport. Ladies and gents, subs and non-subs, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, you've heard it all a million times. All of my socials can be found in my description. And remember, I'll never be a real YouTuber until I've released an apology video or two. That's all guys, peace out. I need a weapon. Weapon? This is all I've got. It's enough.